Hi there, and thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate your presence here. We're excited to embark on this learning journey together. Today, we're diving into a topic that's going to transform your virtualization game. Creating virtual network bridges for KVM on CentOS and Rocky Linux 9. The standard way can be quite a bumpy ride, often leading to frustrating failures. Now there's the old method, which involves creating a bridge, adding the default Ethernet device, and then deleting it. Sounds risky, right? It is, and it can seriously disrupt your server's networking, especially when you're trying to manage it remotely using SSH. But the highlight of today's video is this. In this video, we will show you a very different way to create KVM virtual network bridges. It's a method that just works like a charm, enabling you to effortlessly set up multiple bridges for your virtual machines, each with its unique IP range. Now, here's the exciting part we will hand over to our KVM expert, Nico who's all set to guide you through the entire process. So let's dive in and explore this innovative approach to KVM bridge creation without failure. Now, I should mention that Nico speaks with a Dodecanese European accent, but fear not, as he speaks the Queen's English fluently. So, without further ado, let me hand over the presentation to Nico. Nico, take it away. When you try to create a bridge connection or multiple bridge connections for KVM, on CentOS 9 or Rocky Linux 9, the problem becomes very clear very soon. I have provided this document in our wiki. There's a link below. Have a look and open this document. To start, we run this command to create our bridge. And after we've created our bridge, we then run this command, so far, so good. And then we create our interface. We run this command. That's also good. Then we add the Ethernet port to our bridge. And the minute we do this, we have a 60% chance of failure that the network will be disconnected. So if you're trying to set up a bridge on a remote server running SSL, you are going to have a 99% chance of failure. You actually need to do this on the keyboard at the server. Or if you have a console on the server, a remote console, you need to do it from the remote console on the server itself and not via SSH. And even then, you still have a chance that your networking can be damaged irreversibly. So let us assume at this point in time, you were one of the 40% chances where you got it right. Then the next thing you need to do is to delete the Ethernet device. So the minute you go and you say delete this, you run the command to delete the Ethernet device, you now have another chance to break your network connection. I've broken a few servers many times trying to do this. There is another way to do it, and I'm going to demonstrate this way to you now. So in this case, we are going to use different commands and we're not going to destroy anything. So we're going to start with this command, which will create our bridge. So copy the command, paste it onto the server, say enter. And now we have that. Then we need to give it an IP range. So this is my private network at home, 110.154.2.1. And you can't access it, I'm behind the firewall. So you put your private network that you want for that particular bridge. So in my case, this is what I would put. And press enter. I gave my bridge the name BR MyLAN0. And here I have specified the IP range for my home server. 
The next you need to do is to bring this up. And while I'm about it, let's create another one. So, these are popular private LAN IP ranges, 10.154, the 10 series you'll find used by large corporates, and they also use the 172 series. So let's copy this command here. I've now called this, oh, this should be, there's a typo here. It should be B or my land zero. I'll fix it in the document. So let's just fix the typo. Right. And we set it the IP range. At this point in time, I should be able to see the two bridges. If I say IPA, I have B or my land zero. There's the 10 dot IP range. And then here I have B or my land one. And there's the IP range. So the next thing we want to do, let me clear the screen. is we want to be able to ping these. So let's start with the first one. I don't know if you can notice the mistake here, but ping is spelled with a capital P. It should be lowercase. So I'll fix my document, but I'm going to just paste this in like that, and I should be able to ping this range. I am. So I, the bridge that I just created now, I can ping. And I am connected to a remote server in another country. Now let's try the next one. Great. Now this is all fine and well until you reboot the server. Then once you reboot the server, the network settings are lost. Now we need to do the next part. We need to edit, but I'm not going to use VI, I'm going to use Nano. Most people know Nano, so at least... And then in there, we put this. Here, here we are telling the, the server is going to persist this network setting. We are saying that we want a device called that. It is a type of bridge. We want the IP range to be that. Well, that's the device IP address. And uh, that will also be your gateway for your VMs if you run VMs on your server. And then the standard mask 255, 255, 2550. And then on boot, yes. So this must start on boot. So let's put this in there. And save this. Control S, Control X. And likewise, we would do this for the other LAN. This time I'll run VI. So you have to say I for insert. Copy. Paste and then escape colon WQ. Right, so we've done it both ways. And finally, we need to restart the network manager.
and we can see there's my len and there's my len zero as you can see this procedure is a lot simpler to use and to implement and it's even more effective than the previous procedure as it's very easy to add multiple bridges so in this application i'm able to have different ip ranges for networks on the same server using different bridges and with that back to you josh we thank you for watching this video and spending your valuable time with us today today we learned a better way to create virtual network bridges for kvm on centos and rocky linux 9. we discovered that the standard and old approaches can be risky and challenging However, we've presented a safer alternative that just works, making it easy to set up multiple bridges for your virtual machines with different IP ranges. But our learning doesn't end here. We want to hear from you. Please take a moment to leave a comment about this video. Your feedback is incredibly valuable to us, and it helps us create content that's even more tailored to your needs. If you enjoyed this video and want to stay updated with our latest content, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. By subscribing, you'll never miss out on our informative videos and tutorials. And for those of you who want to take your knowledge to the next level, consider becoming a Patreon. As a Patreon supporter, you'll gain access to our exclusive training courses in PDF format as they become available. It's a fantastic way to deepen your expertise and support the channel at the same time. Once again, thank you for being a part of our community. And we look forward to seeing you in our next video. Until then, Keep learning and exploring the world of technology with us.